Dude, what we say every time is the reason you can't is the reason you must. If you don't have time, dude, you need to be at the conference more than anybody because we're going to show you how to create more time by building systems and processes. If you don't have the money, you need to be at the conference just as much as anybody because we're going to show you how to make more money. And dude, you know what? I usually say on podcasts like this, like if someone legitimately, like legitimately does not have the money, like you got $48 in your bank account and you're trying to eat next next week, come to the event, man. You can hit me up on Facebook, Hunter Ballou. You can have a ticket. I mean, I we wrapped up. We put so much information into that hour. I mean, that was. I usually go an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. But frankly, I mean, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to convolute the show at all. I want to make sure that it just stays. Ex, uh, you know, with, with the value that we're trying to provide. There's so many guys out there that have conferences and events and coaching programs and everything that focus on just the business, and that's fine. Like we focus on business too and how to grow your business and see a positive return on investment, cash wise, after you come to our events. But it all starts with us as human beings, as leaders of our family, our team, our community, the world. Like if we don't take care of us without self-worth, you can't have a high net, net worth. So uh, we just kind of brought a little bit different spin to the industry. I mean, it, it does talk about value, but it talks about a lot yeah. of things that you're doing where it's always more important. And it talks about building a successful business too. Is it about, it's about just building a successful career and all yeah. of it's about giving more than you're actually receiving. And if you if, awesome. if everything that you give, your product that you give, your effort that you give, if it's more and double and triple and quadruple or ten times the value that the actual other person or company or whatever it is receiving, if that's how you become successful. I was not about door knocking, dude, like at all. I didn't want to door knock because I was a marketer, right? So like I had to prove that we could market and get leads. And so this kid applies and he's like, hey man, I want to come meet you. So I take him to a local Mexican joint here. We're talking, and I'm like, yeah, dude, you don't have to knock doors, we'll provide leads yada 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 he's like well do you care if i knock doors and i'm like no nah, i mean I, I guess i don't care if you knock doors but you don't have to dude the go the, the guy goes out the next month and crushes it sounds like 250 grand or something in his first month and i'm like okay all right maybe we should be door knocking i mean i don't even know where to go you're so good at explaining your answers that it's like even it actually makes it a little bit more difficult for me to even elaborate on it because you talk so well about these events about roofcon and about everything you've got going on it's it's really it's really enlightening uh hunter speaking to you man it's re it's really awesome you seriously have to have this conviction you have to like care so much more about your team's success than your personal success like Hunter couldn't worry about putting a million bucks in his pocket until he took care of his his team and made sure that they all had the opportunity to make a hundred grand a year. What's up, advocates, and welcome back to another episode of the Claims Game Podcast with your host Vince Perry. Uh, don't forget, you can find us pretty much everywhere at this point. But if you go on www.commercialclaimsadvocate.com, you'll be able to find a lot of really cool things. Our schedule for all of our meetups, which we're going to be having in Tampa on September 17th, in Miami on November 19th, where we're getting anywhere from 100 to 200 people at the event. Uh, we're about 50, 60% public adjusters, about 30% uh, contractors, independent contractors. We've got attorneys. Uh, we've got all kinds of people in the industry coming to talk shop and learn and educate themselves. We always have a special guest speaker and we've got great sponsors that can provide you with some excellent material that you need to help your business. Uh, we could also, you could also find us on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook and on Instagram as well. Uh, but you could find this podcast also not only on YouTube, but on Spotify, Google Podcasts and um, iTunes. Really great one, guys, today, Hunter Ballou. For those of you who don't know Hunter Ballou, you should. He owns roofing.com. He is the one who puts together RoofCon. It's one of the, the biggest roofing conferences in the entire country every single year. And this year, it's going to be in Orlando on September 30th. That's right. Don't miss this, guys. Orlando, September 30th, RoofCon. Uh, Hunter Ballou uh, actually... Uh, he put together one of the largest uh, roofing companies called Cornerstone uh, and was actually even able to sell up to sell it just based on what he was able to build a eight figure roofing company. That's right. Eight figure roofing company. And what he does now is he puts on this conference. He's got masterminds called Revolt and Fueled, where he's giving back to the industry, giving back to the community and providing with providing them with a ton of information to help grow their business. This guy is amazing, not just because of what he's done, but also what he's done for his community, um, how much he gives back to his community and just really, really great guy overall. 
very successful, very driven. And I think you guys are going to love this podcast. Whether you're a roofer, public adjuster, or just anybody in business, just an entrepreneur, you're going to love this podcast. So make sure you check him out. Uh, you, like I said, you can find him on roofing.com. Uh, you can also check out his Fueled website, which is fueled.org. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him on LinkedIn. If you want to hit him up on Facebook, he's the kind of person where if you hit him up, he will respond to you. So check him out whenever you can. Hunter Ballou, really amazing guy, true leader, true entrepreneur. Check it out. Claims Game Podcast coming at you. Welcome to the Claims Game Podcast with Vince Perry. Get all the tips you need from insurance claim advocates and professionals and grow your public adjusting career to the next level. And now the commercial claims advocate, Vince Perry. All right, we are here. Very excited. Um, I've got somebody that I've actually been following for a long time here. Um, somebody that I look up to, to sort of, uh, we were just talking before the podcast, you're talking about all these things that you got going on. I'm just like, I'm just trying to catch up to you, man. You are doing a heck of a job, Hunter. We've got Hunter Ballou here on the Claims Game podcast. And uh, Hunter, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, man. Pumped to be on the Claims Game. Talk a little business, talk a little life. Excited to be here. Exactly. Um, like I said, I've been following you for a while. Uh, you've got a hell of a thing going on in the roofing industry and the overall coaching and consulting industry. Uh, you've got that fuel thing going on, which I'm going to ask you about as well. Uh, but I mean, before we really get started, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you really started on this whole journey that you got going on? Yeah, man. So I'll give you a little backstory. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I don't feel like anybody grows up and says, hey, you know, I want to be a roofer. I want to be in the roofing industry. I want to sell roofs. I want to build roofs. I want to chase storms. Like nobody really says that. It just kind of finds you or somebody says, hey, man, I'm making 100 grand a year. Why don't you come do it with me? And so that, that's kind of the story for me, too, man, I, is I, I didn't go out looking to become a roofer or get in the roofing industry. Uh, I left high school when I graduated. I went to the Marine Corps. I did six years in the reserve there. And while I was in the reserve, I, I spent five years at the fire department full time here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm from I'm from upstate South Carolina. I'm still here. Uh, super happy with it. I, I love it here. I don't think you'd ever catch me moving anywhere else. And so I, I spent five years here at the fire department, at Greenville City Fire Department, North Greenville Fire Department. And uh, I just always had kind of this entrepreneurial spirit, like I wanted to do something outside of the fire department. I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to be able to grow a team. I wanted to be able to make money, right? Like not 24 grand a year, 34 grand a year that I was making at the fire department. When I started, I think it was like 24, 24, five, something like that. Um, and so I wanted to be able to kind of control my own destiny and not live paycheck to paycheck. Like I had seen my family do, you know, there's so many stories I've got of like literally remember. I remember so many times, not just like one time, and I tell this story to, to sound cool, but like so many times I remember digging in the floorboards or between the seats, trying to find change for my parents to put gas in the car. And so just from a young age, man, I just remember thinking my life is going to be different. Like I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to create wealth so that I can not only live a more enjoyable life for myself, but also serve others. And so joined the, joined the fire department, did that for a few years. And I said, you know what? I got to go out and I got to do my own thing. I had been doing some side hustles. I'd started a, a moving company called Upstate Holland and Delivery. Uh, I started buying and selling boats and cars and trailers and all kind of stuff. And, you know, when I sold that first car and I made like a thousand, twelve hundred bucks, whatever it was, it just clicked. You know, I was busting my butt two weeks at the fire department and bringing home. I think the check was like seven hundred and nine dollars. <laughs> and so when I made that first thousand, twelve hundred bucks off of a car that I had for 48 hours, I was like, dude, there's another life out there, you know? Uh, so after spending that time at the fire department, I jumped out and actually started a marketing agency. I didn't know anything about marketing, but I was committed to figuring it out. I'd saved up some good money from the business, from buying and selling, uh, flipping some real estate. And so I started buying courses, going to events, hiring coaches and just figuring out the game. And that game led me to my first roofing client, which was a good buddy of mine now, Justin Common out of Minneapolis Innovative Building. And we helped him crush it back in 2017 was that first year that I really dove into the roofing space. Um, to that, to end of 2016, beginning of 2017. 
And so 2017, we were like, all right, let's do this ourselves. Let's start Cornerstone as a case study. I'd started working with roofers at that point. I was like, man, let's just do this as a case study. If, if this kid from South Carolina that doesn't know anything, literally, I knew nothing about roofing. Like I didn't know the difference between three tab and arc, you know, <laughs> how steep a roof was, any of that stuff. Um, so I figured if I could get the seven figures and show that I could do it, then I could obviously convince these roofers that I could help them add another seven figures to their business through my marketing strategies. And throughout the process, man, of building Cornerstone, started taking it more serious towards the end of 2018 and really dove in head first. January of 2019 is when I really started taking it serious. And so like 17, we were like a million, 18, we're like 2 million. We got serious at the end of 18, said, all right, let's take it serious next year. And then we did five. And then last year we were like, hey, we want to we hit the eight figure mark. You know, we felt like that was that next big mark for us. And we crushed the, the $10 million mark in, in July and kept pushing from there. And so I found throughout the journey of trying to build Cornerstone as a case study that I just enjoyed it more than I enjoyed marketing. Like I wanted to be around a team, not just sitting behind a computer all day. And, and here I am sitting behind a computer again. <laughs> but uh, no, man, building a team is, is just so much fun. And then throughout building Cornerstone, we just saw that there was a piece missing from the roofing industry. And that was the personal development side. That was the self-worth side. Like there's so many guys out there that have conferences and events and coaching programs and everything that focus on just the business. And that's fine. Like we focus on business too and how to grow your business and see a positive return on investment cash wise after you come to our events. But it all starts with us as human beings, as leaders of our family, our team, our community, the world. Like if we don't take care of us without self-worth, you can't have a high net, net worth. So uh, we just kind of brought a little bit different spin to the industry. That's awesome. Uh, you said that 10 million mark was with Cornerstone, right? Not the marketing yeah. agency? Yeah, with Cornerstone. And then I ended up selling Cornerstone to a publicly traded company. So I could go all in on roofing.com and RoofCon or event and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So while you were building Cornerstone, you already had the marketing agency. Did you have clients as well with the marketing agency while you were still building Cornerstone? So 2018 was really when I started to shut that down. Um, the summer 2000, 2018, I had some pretty serious consulting gigs where I made like really good money. Um, I came back from one of those, was, which was out in the Midwest. I actually spent some time out there. My wife was pregnant at the time. I spent like two weeks without her, three weeks without her. Then she came for a couple of weeks. Uh, we came back and uh, I had this, this kid apply as a young kid. At the time, dude, this is funny. I don't know that I've even told this part of the story before, but um, at the time I was not about door knocking, dude, like at all. I didn't want to door knock because I was a marketer. Right. So like I had to prove that we could market and get leads. And so this kid applies and he's like, Hey man, I want to come meet you. So I take him to a local Mexican joint here. We're talking and I'm like, yeah, dude, you don't have to knock doors. We'll provide leads. Yada, yada, yada. And he's like, well, do you care if I knock doors? And I'm like, nah, I mean, I, I guess I don't care if you knock doors, but you don't have to. Dude, the, go, the, the guy goes out the next month and crushes. It sounds like 250 grand or something in his first month. And I'm like, okay, all right, maybe we should be door knocking. So That's I started awesome. diving into all these courses and stuff and figuring out, all right, I got to get some training on door knocking. I got to hire more door knockers. And so that's why I say, you know, end of 2018, we brought this kid on and it kind of shifted how we were playing the game of not just doing marketing. I, I kind of look at it like you need – a couple of different pieces. You got to have the marketing piece. You got to have relationships and you got to have door knock. And I call that the trifecta of lead generation in the roof industry. So if you have your relationships, meaning referral based, your customers, you have insurance agents, you have real estate agents, you have door knocking. We're out there hustling every day. And then you're running marketing campaigns. Dude, if you can perfect all three of those, and I, I have not seen a roofing company do it yet to where they perfected all three of those you will crush it. Absolutely crush it. I felt like we were pretty good um, at three of them, at, at all three of them, um, but not great at all three of them. That's amazing. Um, I was kind of the same way about door knocking as well, because I did it. I did it when I started. You know, we had a yeah. hurricane back in, uh, back in uh, after Irma. No, but we had a hurricane back in 05 when I first started. And it's a little bit easier to go door knocking, at least for us, when there's a yeah. storm and we could just go door knocking, door knocking, door knocking. And it worked like it worked great, but it's exhausting. It's exhausting to go door knocking, but it's yeah. also an amazing experience. It really teaches you about like hardcore sales, man, to really just open up, get that door open and open up the actual, that, that, 
that that block, that door that they've got, the actual the the hypothetical door that they've got in front of them to yeah. just try to be able to let yourself in and convince them to, to actually to make a huge purchase like that. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And you've got the marketing relationships is always something that I've always done. I mean, that's always been my core of trying to get trying to get business and stuff. But I like how you were open to also somebody who comes in and say, hey, I want to try door knocking. It's like you could have easily just said, no, that's we don't do that here. But, you know, you allowed them the opportunity to go ahead and just give it a shot and look what look what happened. That's amazing. Now yeah, you have man. a new now you have a trifecta because of that one <laughs> dude that came in there and said he right. wanted to door knock. For sure. Yeah, that, for sure. That's awesome, man. And um, and so you said you weren't doing too much marketing at the time or you had your marketing agency and you built Cornerstone. Uh, you said that you really enjoy building a team. Uh, what were some of the things that you did with Cornerstone uh, besides the marketing and door knocking and sales and stuff like that, that really allowed the team to really grow and, and, and I guess get to that eight figure mark that you guys got to. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about this, this piece a lot, you know, at RoofCon the event, we talk about it at the retreats on podcasts all the time the biggest key to growing a team and to having success, man. And, and, you know, I, I know most of the the big guys in the industry, I've traveled around, seen their shops, talked to them, ask them questions. And, and it's been true for myself too. It's like, you seriously have to have this conviction. You have to like care so much more about your team's success than your personal success. Like Hunter couldn't worry about putting a million bucks in his pocket until he took care of his, his team and made sure that they all had the opportunity to make a hundred grand a year. So that's what it became, man. It's like someone would come in this office right here. There's a big TV on the wall and they'd say, you know, what's the vision for Cornerstone? Why should I join Cornerstone instead of these eight eight other companies? And we had it laid out. You know, we had this map of like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to grow these markets. We're going to get to 10 million in this market and then move to the next one. And we just wanted to continue to grow. Now, obviously that, that map got cut a little bit short because we had a publicly traded company come in and offer, make a great offer. And we felt like they would help facilitate that dream and get to what we had laid out and our vision. And then that would help our guys accomplish their dreams. So we rolled with that, but we were able to sell them on that, not only because of the vision of where we were going, but because of our conviction and we have to make sure they're successful. So I've said this phrase a thousand times, dude, seriously. We're going to give you all the tools, the training, and the technology to make six figures, but you have to bring the work ethic. We will absolutely give you every tool you need, every freaking video you could possibly need in training, and we're going to give you the technology, the apps, the hell maps, company cam, anything you need to be successful, we will provide you, but you have to show up and put in the work. We can't do that for you. And so that has been our guarantee from the very beginning, man, is like when someone leaves, we don't feel bad because we know it's their fault. Now, realistically, as a leader, do I feel bad? Yes, because I feel like it always falls on me. Whether that means that I didn't do a good enough job vetting them at the front end. But the problem is you just, you can't vet work ethic, man. People can talk the biggest game they want to talk. I've, I've said for years, like if I could figure out how to vet for work ethic, bro, I'd be a billionaire tomorrow. It's like I was telling you with that guy that I had. It's the same thing, you know. He had great work ethic when we started, and he was going out there door knocking, signing a bunch of claims. But then, like that was it. It yeah. just sort of went away, you know. And I had it because I had to give him a kick in the ass to get going again, and he's now yeah. going again. But you're right; you can't really tell. Sometimes somebody will show work ethic in the beginning, and then the work yeah. ethic sort of slowly goes away. It, it is, man. It's just an emotional game. You talked about it going up to the door and trying to break past that wall. And like, it's an emotional game. Like you have to have your head right at all the time and you have to have a good team around you to hold you accountable and to push you. That's really what it is. What's the struct? What was the structure like at Cornerstone? Like the actual, I guess the leadership structure and what were some of the things that you had in place to keep you guys always continuing to grow besides, and I also want to ask you about your mission and vision statement, but before that, I guess, what was, what was the structure? What was the team like? What were some of the roles that people had? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So for us, we, uh, we did implement a, a team lead structure uh, because one thing I saw early on is like, you have all these sales guys and then you have a sales manager and you got all these sales guys that a lot of them, I mean, they're alpha personalities, right? Like they want to be the best. They want to compete and they feel like they're capped. They feel like they have nowhere to go. They, they can't be a man in a management role. They can't get to an executive role. Like they just feel like they're stuck. So we created a team lead structure to where they could make, uh, bless you, you. Uh, <laughs> a team lead structure so that they could make a percent 
off of anyone that they recruited, brought in and trained and led, but they had to actually do that. It wasn't something where like you go recruit a kid at the Walmart and then you make a percent off of him the rest of his career. No, like you've got to lead him. You've got to answer his questions. You've got to help him out. That was the entire point. It's like we wanted to promote leadership. When we talk about roofing.com, we talk about RoofCon and all those things and personal development, more than professional development on the business side, you know, it starts with becoming a better leader. And, and that's what we did inside of Cornerstone too. That's not just what we do with our team at roofing.com. It's what we did at Cornerstone. Like we wanted to develop leaders. Well, yeah, and that's what, that's what a great leader does, right? A great leader builds more leaders. Yeah. I read that all the time. I mean, that's what John you Maxwell. Yeah, John Maxwell will be there this year at, at RoofCon, and one of his sayings that I love is multiplication over addition. You know, for, for a lot of our, even our, our uh, sales managers or branch managers, they'd say like, hey, I'm going to go out this month, I'm going to sell five roofs to get our numbers up. No, dog, don't sell five roofs. Sell five people on the vision. Sell five people in the dream of joining the team and then have them sell five roofs. Then your five turns into 25. The power of multiplication when you talk about leadership. For sure. For sure. Um, so what was your, uh, what was Cornerstone's mission vision statement? Curious. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for us, we tied in the core values. And so the core values for us, man, were, you know, we always wanted to provide the best product, no matter what that meant in terms of profit margin. We weren't going to short Miss Betty that's 80 years old and, you know, doesn't know any better just because we can make more money. So we we're always going to provide the best product. We we're always going to provide the best customer experience. No matter what, no matter if Miss Betty needed to call us 20 times because she didn't have any family and she, you know, just wanted to have somebody to talk to. We're willing to go out there, spend time with her, pour into her, love on her. And, it, it, and inevitably, man, like the business side of this is you increase the lifetime value of that customer. Now, you may say, hey, Miss Betty's 80 years old and she's never going to buy another roof. So what do you mean increase the lifetime value? Well, guess what? I mean, I'd consider Miss Betty's network part of her value, Right. Because if Miss Betty can tell her neighbors, if she can tell her friends at church, if she can tell her friends at Hardy's when she goes to eat biscuits in the morning, right? Like she can increase the value of that relationship by referring us to people. So we're willing to pour into that relationship to raise the value of that relationship. And then lastly, and most importantly, is we're going to give back to our community. Our little slogan we always said was the more we grow, the more we give. And we're going to continue to do that. As we grow more, we're going to give more. One of the things we started was a, a nonprofit called Cornerstone Kids, where we'd give 1% back to Cornerstone Kids, and then we'd pour into local youth. And my wife runs that. So we have a, a little program called Life 101. And so kids will come in for a day. We have someone training on fitness. We have someone talking about addiction. We have someone training on how to change the oil in your car, how to change the tire. We have uh, leadership training. We have financial literacy and how to manage your bank account and write checks and da, 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 da. All the things that, unfortunately, you don't really learn in school, right? Like the basics that every person should know, but you don't learn in school. And so Life 101 does that. We, we just recently had a summer fest with like over a thousand kids there. Uh, we rented like a ton of blow ups and had face painting and magic tricks and superheroes dressed up and all that. And it's just a way to pour back into the community, man. Like no matter what market we're in, if we hear of, you know, a kid and a family that maybe their house burned down and they need clothes and they need a place to stay or they need food, it's an opportunity for us to take that money we've set aside and put into their, you know, put into what they need it for. It's not just about us. Last year, we had something pretty cool with, uh, with COVID. It hit somebody had tagged me online and said, Hey, Travelers S High School, which is the local high school that I went to. They said, Hey, Travelers S High School isn't going to have the prom this year because of COVID. So all the, you know, I'm sure it happened where you were at too. All the proms got shut down. So all these kids, all these seniors that are looking for their last hoorah together, aren't going to get to have prom. And so someone tagged me and said, Hey, Hunter, where did you do your reunion at last year? Because I had paid for our 10 year reunion for my class. And it, we looked at it as an opportunity, like what could we do to help these kids out? So we ended up saying, hey, we're going to pay for the venue. We're going to pay for the DJ. We're going to pay for, you know, some snacks and do some giveaways. I think we did like a thousand dollars worth of giveaways per, per event. And it started as we're going to do this for Travelers S High School, which is like five miles away from our office. And dude, it turned into 12 schools. We did a dozen schools, their proms. And it was cool to see that. And we spent like 40 grand on these proms because we went in and negotiated with the venue and said, hey, we're going to do 12 of them. Give us a discount. The DJ did the same thing. We dropped 40 grand on this from the money we had set aside with Cornerstone Kids. But what was really cool, dude, is like as much as it impacted the kids 
and the parents and we got brand recognition. That wasn't what it was about, but inevitably that happens, right? Like the news is talking about you. What was really cool is now our team that busts their butt every single day out in the field, when they're ready to go home and it's six o'clock, then it's, they've got money in the bank account and their family wants to see them. It's not about the money anymore. It's about making sure when something like that happens, when a kid's house burns down, when a kid's kid gets cancer, when a kid wants to go to Disney World and they can't afford to, we can take some money and we can allot it to them. And now our team has a common mission to push harder and push further than they ever would have before for their own commissions. And so when these guys, all of our team members went to these proms, we did, man, like six to eight of us at a time would get dressed up and we'd go to the prom and we'd celebrate with each school. So we like divvied it up. And it was the coolest thing, man. Like we literally would go out there, we'd do limbo with them. We do the prizes with them. And it was an awesome team build moment for our team to see how impactful they are together. That's awesome, man. That's phenomenal, yeah. Hunter. That's really, really cool. It was fun, man. We had a good time. I mean, for you to come up with the idea, for you to take the time to do it, for you to get your entire company involved, for you to get so many people involved, for you to help so many people in your community, especially at a time like this, you know, with what we're going through with COVID and everything and giving those kids a prom. I mean, that's phenomenal. Where does this all, where does this all come from? Like where, where did you, where do you think you were able to get the energy and then also the mindset to not just, not just make it about profit, but also make it about giving back. Yeah, man. I, I think, uh, I think it compounds um, the, the more you talk about it and say it to your team and to people online on podcasts like this, the more it, it becomes you, the, the more that like, it's just subconscious. Like you don't have to think about it. Like you don't have to think about, Oh, we should do this and try to get back or we should do it. And maybe we'll get more work for it. Like, no, it's just, it really is who we are and we want to serve in a big way. And I, I was just telling somebody this man last night, like, I hate the word value because everyone says it now and it's overused. Like there's some keywords like that, like value and culture and whatever. But in terms of value, man, like I want to be the guy that always gives more value than the other guy. Like you may give me a ton of value, but by golly, like I'm trying to outwork you to give you more value than me. And so that's kind of our MO here at Cornerstone, man, is like we really want to give back, not just for PR, BS like that, like we really want to give back and make a difference in a bigger way than just roofing. Because to be honest, and I've said this on many podcasts, and I've said this from stage at my own event with hundreds of people there this year, thousands of people there. Like, dude, I really don't like the roofing industry. Like, I don't like, I don't like roofing. Like, do you love roofing? Like, it, does roofing get you excited in the morning? I don't know. It doesn't me, and I don't think it does most people. It's just a vehicle. It's just a tool we can use to help serve our team, help serve the community. I don't, I mean, I'm not saying like I hate it and it's bad or I'm embarrassed of it by any means. I'm just saying I don't just love roofing, but it's a vehicle to help us accomplish great things and impact lives. And how have you taken all this that you do that you did with Cornerstone? How have you transferred into now into, I mean, this mega event that you've got now? And I, you know, people talk, right? And people always talk about RoofCon being it. You know, RoofCon is, is where it's at. That's the conference you need to go to. That's one of the big, con I mean, there's a ton of conferences. You know that everybody and their mother's yeah. throwing a conference now. But everybody seems to go back to RoofCon, especially in the roofing industry. They go back to RoofCon. RoofCon's where it's at. That's where you have to go. That's what you have to do. Check it out. Roofing.com. Hunter's the man. <clears throat> How have you been able to, I guess, sort of take all of your, excuse me, I'm going to use core values that you've sort of developed throughout your entire career, throughout your entire adult life and throughout uh, growing and ultimately selling Cornerstone? How have you been able to transfer that now into giving back to the roofing community with RoofCon and with everything that you guys do? Yeah, man. So uh, this is a super fun topic, you know, just because it's only been a couple of years, man. And like, we've seen so many positive things come out of the community. And so when I, when I say some things about RoofCon and roofing.com um, and, and how it's changed lives, like I don't say that for like me or just my team changing people's lives. It's literally been a collaboration of all the great people in the industry. I, I mean, I'm serious about that. Like it doesn't happen without, Paul Reed, Erico, Pate Smith, John Dye, Joe Hughes, Troy Climber. Boom, boom, boom. Dude, I could literally name dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people who have made it happen because they bought in and they believed in it from the very beginning. When I called in August of 
of 2019 and said, hey, we want to do something different. We want to focus on people of high integrity who are focused on becoming better leaders and leaving a very powerful legacy, not just go out to the conference and use it as a vacation to get away from the wife and get drunk and go to the club and whatever. Like there's plenty of great conferences, but for us, it was more about we're going to come to an event and we're going to be intentional with our time. And when you break from the keynote, when you break from the breakout, when you go out of there, don't just go home and sit and text on your phone or go to the hotel, like be intentional while you're there, man, you're already sacrificing time away from your family. So you might as well be intentional and build relationships with other high integrity people that took the time to come to the event. And so for us, man, it's, it's literally just been continued to draw in that crowd. Like dude, our, our group in the last year has gone from 8,000 members to just, I, I don't know if we broke it yet. I think we're right at 23,000 members. So in a year we've added 15,000 members to a roofing and solar community on Facebook. And we actually would probably be at like 25,000, but like a month or two, I changed the name from roofing and sales community to roofing and solar community. And it messed up our algorithm bad. So we went from getting like 2000 new members a month to freaking like 500. So it's really messed us up. Um, But, you know, there's, there's kind of the levels to what we've done with roofing.com and the first year, you know, we only had like 60 people come to RoofCon, and we heard so many good things because of how intimate it was. And people got the opportunity to meet everybody. And so as we grew RoofCon to now this year going to be a couple thousand people, we wanted to make sure that we still gave people an opportunity to be intimate. And you could do that through breakouts and the expo and all that network. But we started doing these revolt retreats. And I don't know if you've seen much about that or seen the videos. Uh, you could check it out on our YouTube channel. But, dude, those are absolute game changers. And I literally – we've done it with hundreds of people now. I could pull 100 testimonials right now of men that have, have said it, it's changed their life. And we're just now starting to do that for women um, because we feel like in those more intimate settings, we're staying in a house together. So we rent like these huge houses in Utah or Gatlinburg, Tennessee. We'll rent these huge houses and we'll have 30, 40 people together max. And it's just an opportunity to open up, be raw, be real, be transparent, talk about struggles in your life, addiction, anything you're struggling with and get advice from others in the room. And for a long time, we, we did men only because I didn't feel like it was right for me to lead the women's retreats. I feel like a woman needs to lead the women's retreat because they're going to open up and be more real. And I, I can't necessarily relate to their problems. I don't understand their struggles the way a woman would. Uh, so we recently did our first women's retreat and I did lead it for now. And then we're doing another one. I, I think it's going to be Q1 of 2022. And we're basically saying, hey, here's our framework. Here's how we run these. We want a couple of you gals out of the, we've had like 80 people sign up for it. We want a couple of you gals to take it and run with it and go serve the ladies in this industry because it's going to be more powerful coming from them than us. And dude, we've gotten so much hate, so much hate from women in the industry because they think that we're just like sexist people. And it's not about that at all, man. It's literally about helping men become better fathers, better husbands, better leaders for them. And if you were to go ask the the wives of our revolt members, they would absolutely tell you they're changed men and how powerful it is. That's fueled you're talking about, right? No, that's revolt. Revolt is the mastermind for uh, roofing.com. Okay. Hold on. If I can go back, cause I don't want to stop you. So I don't want to yeah. catch off whenever you start going. Um, why is roofing, why is RoofCon different? You mentioned it's different than anything else. Yeah. If you could get into, why is it different? Yeah. Yeah. Basically what I said from the beginning, man, is we're going to focus more on self-worth than just net worth. You know, you can go to every event, you can learn how to recruit better and you can learn how to, you know, close more deals. And you can do that at RoofCon too. We literally have a a sales panel. We have a recruiting panel. We have Sam Tiger. We have Becca Switzer. We have Joe Hughes. We have the marketing panel. We have all those things, but we're going to integrate self-worth as well. John Maxwell coming and talking about leadership. Iron Cowboy talking, you know, talking about mindset. Ed Milet coming in. Uh, Craig Rochelle coming in. Craig Rochelle, like nobody knows his name. He's going to rock the stage, bro. Like, I bet you that a large portion of the attendees walk away from the event and say, wow, Craig Rochelle is actually maybe the best speaker that was there. Like, the dude, I've been listening to him for years and he's changed my life. What's his name again? Craig Rochelle, Leadership Podcast. Do I have that podcast? 
I don't know. I don't think I have Craig Rochelle. Yeah. His little tagline is, is uh, people would rather follow a leader who's always real than always right. He signs off with that every time if you've heard of that. <laughs> oh, no, no, I haven't heard of that. Um, that's awesome. Sounds like you have a real mix of people. It's not just, we're not just talking about roofing. We're talking about everything. We're talking about mindset. We're trying to get you going, get you, get you, yeah. you know, sort of straighten you out, making sure that you're, you're doing this for more than just money, I guess. Um, that's freaking awesome. I mean, I don't even know where to go. You're so good at explaining your answers that it's like, even it's actually makes it a little bit more difficult for me to even elaborate on it because you talk so well about these events, about the RoofCon and about everything that you've got going on. It's, it's really, it's really enlightening, uh, Hunter speaking to you, man. It's, re it's really awesome. Um, appreciate it, man. I'm just reading a script on my thing, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell me about, uh, well, I mean, you mentioned the, the revolt and mastermind. So how is this, I guess I'm, what I'm, what, as you could, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm trying to get to sort of like everything that you've got going on. Let's, I want to try to hit everything. Uh, I mean, you went from, uh, yeah. you went from, from, uh, being a roofer and, and a starting cornerstone. Um, you went, uh, you were able to sell that, which is just amazing to me. Uh, then you started RoofCon and you started your marketing firm and everything, but you really focus on personal development, which I think is fantastic. Uh, you've got this RoofCon thing going on. And then I thought that the mastermind was fuel, but you said it was revolt. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between the two? Yeah. Yeah. People get it up mixed up all the time. Okay, good. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, no fault of yours for sure. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of run through that a little, little more cleanly. So roofing.com is kind of our parent company. Mm -hmm. You go to roofing.com, you'll see everything that we have to offer. We have RoofCon, we have Roof Cruise, we have Revolt. And Revolt is the mastermind for contractors. And as I said, right now, it's men only. Um, when people join Revolt, they get access to the courses we have. We have coaches like Joe Hughes and Chuck Toki and Matt Danskin. And so they actually get a bunch of those courses for free when they join Revolt. Um, we have two... We have two retreats a year where they get to come uh, for free. You know, there's no cost. You just come out there. You pay your travel, come out. We've got the house. We pay to go out on boats and UTVs and all that. We've got, again, awesome videos of all this on our YouTube channel at roofing.com. Uh, and that is the one where we pour back into contractors and where we're soon to open the women's side of that and, and push uh, some women through retreats so that they can start running it themselves. Fueled is completely separate. Fueled is essentially... The same thing as Revolt, except for it's for all industries. And right now it's based here out of Greenville, South Carolina. We have an actual physical location with a gym in it, co-working space, jujitsu mats, lounge, kitchen, all of that. And, and we just saw how powerful it was with Revolt and the lives that it changed. And we wanted to do that for all industries, not just contractors. And so we opened up a spot here in Greenville, South Carolina. We've got about 35 members right now and growing. And so that's that's been awesome, man. Um, in terms of like what ties more into, I guess, related to this podcast being in the roofing industry, you know, I said roofing.com, you got RoofCon, Roof Cruise, Revolt. One thing that we really wanted to do was to have a tool for the space. And so we recently actually partnered, we bought um, half of RepCard. I don't know if you've heard of RepCard. It is an app for sales reps. Um, isn't that for business oh, cards? It's like a, it's like a, like a business card where you send a text, yeah. they can click it, they download to their phone, all the contact yeah, information. Yeah. yeah. Most yeah. people think it's just a digital business card. And it actually has a lot more features than that. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, and I've known Brad for a while. He's helped us out with RoofCon with registration and everything. He's got the app so that you can scan people's badges when you go to the events and connect with them. But yeah, man, you can set up the digital business card. It's got NFC. So like I've got it right here in the back of my phone. I could tap someone's, uh, tap someone's phone. I can, pull up the app. And, and so a lot of times as a sales rep, like if you're at the door and they say, Hey, you know, just give me a business card. Well, I don't have a business card on me. Let me just send you my business card. What are you doing? You're getting their contact information. Well, guess what else it does? It sends follow-up campaigns. So you literally pick a follow-up campaign and it'll automate the follow-up for you. It'll send eight, 10, 12, whatever messages you want. And you can put in YouTube videos, you can put in pictures, you can customize it to their name. And so it's just a cool little app to help build your reputation. And then it's got the social page too, right? So like you could go in and pull up your reviews. So like someone can literally go in and see all the reviews of me and what people have to say about me. Is it four stars? Is it five stars? We know how good was that roofing? Just whatever you do. If you're an adjuster, they can talk about you being an adjuster and how well you did on their claim. And so it's just a pretty cool little app. We're, uh, we're over 27,000 uh, users that have signed up at this point. So it's been awesome. 
man, where did you get your entrepreneurial? Where do you think you got that entrepreneurial spirit that you've got? I mean, it just seems like it's just like, boom, 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 one thing after the next. An idea comes and you take action, which is something I do want to talk about because I think taking action probably is the most important thing. Everybody's got ideas, but nobody really is willing to ac actually take action, to actually put it into motion. Uh, but before that, where did you actually, where did you feel like you just got this? You just think it was something that like, you just didn't want to work that nine to five job and you just had an idea and you rolled yeah. with it? Or is it like, is it something that is that like, is there like a daily routine maybe that you go through to just sort of keep you motivated do you have down days where you're just like i don't feel like doing nothing and you just stay home all day and you don't do nothing <laughs> no man it's, it's funny it's kind of like i said earlier man i think it just compounds like I, I think it compounds um i remember being dude i don't know six seven eight years old or something i lived on a dead end road like i said i did not come from a very wealthy family probably below average um family uh, we had a, a junkyard and old like junkyard from like the forties or fifties, like closed down a half a mile from our house. And when I was six, seven, eight, whatever, old enough to walk out of my house and go down the road, I would go to this junkyard and I'd find stuff that was not like completely rusted out. And one of the main things I would find is these glass insulators that used to go on top of the, the telephone poles. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. A lot I of know. people use them as like paperweights or, yeah. or, and so I used to get a bunch of those, man, and I'd, I'd bring those out, you know, I was small, so I couldn't carry a ton, but I'd take this basket in there, I'd go get them. And uh, my grandpa, he had a, a landscaping business. And so I'd work with him a lot, you know, just, just hustling and loved that he owned his own business. And uh, he'd take me to the flea market, to the jockey lot, whatever you call it, whatever part of the world you're in, jockey lot, flea market. And he'd let me sell these insulators. And I'd make two, three bucks a pop. And, you know, I, I jokingly tell people all the time, like, I really don't know if they actually wanted them or if they just thought I was this cute kid they were trying to buy from me. And, you know, either way, um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I think from a young age, dude, it's just literally that. Like, I, I was the kid freaking selling candy out of his backpack at school and just continued to compound. And, and for me, it's, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. Because every time I have that breakthrough, I just I just feel like it's uh you know like Shrek he, Shrek he talks about onions like layers yeah in the movie Shrek yeah like I feel like every time a layer peels off and I have a little breakthrough I'm like well dude if that guy can do it I can do it so now I got to try to hit that like it's almost a curse too because I I want to move too fast and take too many things on and so when you talk about um, putting in the work and doing a bunch of stuff like I did want to say like it, it's not fun to hear for most entrepreneurs but freaking be careful. Like don't a, try to take too much on. Like I've learned the hard way on that side of business. I, you need to have one cash flow in business before you get to the next. Like that old saying about Warren Buffett says you need seven strings of income, dude, please don't do that, man. Like you need one cash flow in business first, then move to the next and not just a cash flow in business. You need a cash flow in business with an operator who can handle it. If your full attention is not on it. Because if you're the guy, if you're the entrepreneur, if you're the one driving it, if you're the operator and you step away, it will decline 100%. You can have the systems and processes and stuff in place, but if you don't have someone with their attention on it, it will decline. Uh, what about burnout? Do you ever have any kind yeah. of burnout? Uh, man, I, I feel like I do pretty good. Like you mentioned, uh, take it off. It just hit me about a week ago. I was with a buddy of mine. We were at the Waffle House up here eating and he said something about uh, taking a break and, you know, we're looking at doing like a Hawaii trip or something after RoofCon. But even when I do something like that, man, I'm still, you know, going, I'm still like, Hey, I want to invite some entrepreneurial friends or, you know, I'm still taking calls or doing podcasts or whatever, because I just don't want to waste any time. And one of my big mottos in life is make it count. Like this flag behind me is my old partner at the fire department. He got hit head on, uh, by a guy running from the police 2015, actually, um, September of 2015, we're a week away from that anniversary, six year anniversary is about two miles from this office right here. Brand new baby girl, beautiful wife. He got hit head on by a guy running from the police and he lost his life. And that was important to me, not just because he was my brother, he was my friend. He was, you know, accountability partner. He was a partner at the fire department, but because he believed in me and he was one of the guys that when a lot of other people I was at the fire department, they were always hating on me, man. They were always like, oh, you know, you're you bought that Jeep, that, that Jeep is a piece of crap. You're not going to make any money on that Jeep. You need to quit buying trailers and boats and all this stuff. And you don't need to do this company. You're wasting time. You need to be training extra at the fire department. They were always hating. And Jordan was the guy that continued to push me. And so for Jordan, he got cut short at 30 years old. And it's important to me that 
I make every single day count. And so, you know, I, I was having that conversation at Waffle House and he's like, dude, you really haven't taken any time off. And it kind of hit me like, I haven't taken any time off, but I really haven't even thought about it. Like it, it never crossed my mind when I got the money in the bank from the sale. And we did pretty damn good on Cornerstone when we sold it, like good enough that it, and I don't, again, I don't say this to brag. I just say this to like to show what's possible to anyone listening. Like you can do it too. I'm a dumb redneck from Greenville, South Carolina. Like, dude, I graduated 189 of 212. I'm serious. Like I'm not the smartest guy. I just freaking work hard and I want to keep learning and I want to keep surrounding myself with, with good people. But like we did good enough. I can never work another day in my life and give away half the money. But if you push hard, you can get that too. And I, I never even thought about taking a day off. Like it literally never even crossed my mind to like, all right, I'm going to take a month off and just chill. Like, no, man, I got stuff to do. I got things to accomplish and I got to make it count. I tell people all the time, it's just like, I'm an idiot. Everybody's like, no, you're not. You're really smart. I'm like, I mean, not really. I mean, I, I tell people, I mean, I was a 2.6 uh, GPA. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how I was able to get through college. I actually made an attempt at law school and that LSAT <laughs> grade, that LSAT was just so bad. I'm like, this is not going to work. And you have to just sort of find, you know, you have to make it work and figure right. it out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just the drive is what does it. I mean, people don't understand. It's not, it's not really, it's not at all about sort of your smarts and that, and there's so many things. I'm sure you're an avid book re book reader. There's just so many things that we've got around us that we could just continue to educate us uh, and educate ourselves on stuff because there's always somebody else that's doing it better and that you could yeah. look after and you could see if you could figure it out and how did they figure it out and you can do it as well. What's crazy too, man, is like you, you talk about books and I got like this shelf over here of all these books. You got the go giver. Like, uh no i don't but i've heard really good things about the good giver i Could think i have it downloaded me, on the audible i mean it, it does talk about value but it talks about a lot yeah. of things that you're doing where it's always more important and it talks about building a successful business too is it about it's about just building a successful career and all yeah. of it's about giving more than you're actually receiving and if you if, awesome. if everything that you give your product that you give your effort that you give if it's more and double and triple and quadruple or 10 times the value that the actual other person or company or whatever it is receiving is that's how you become successful that's awesome man i mean books are truly a shortcut like people say yeah. there's no shortcuts in business I, I call it bs dude like dude if you can pick up tim ferris Brittany Burchard, uh tony robbins john maxwell like i'm looking at all these freaking people over here ray dalio like dude how much time and money did they spend figuring this stuff out they're giving it to me for 1999 are you kidding me like i get to read a book by ray dalio that's worth billions of dollars for freaking 50 bucks life and work principles like dude that's a shortcut hunter how much do you and it's something that i'm getting into now now that i'm putting together my coaching consulting and stuff like that uh, I'm actually now seeking coaches. How much, how much have you put into that and actually seeking coaches and having coaching? Myself? Not you being the coach, you seeking yeah, out yeah. others to yeah, coach yeah. you. Yeah. Me hiring coaches. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've spent multiple six figures in the last 12 months ha. on coaches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the acquisition itself came from me paying $75,000 for a coach. Ah, it is actually, and that it was actually worth how much I mean, you don't have to tell me, but like, imagine that was worth yeah. a hundredfold. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it, it's really more of a mastermind. It wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one coach. It's a mastermind with several coaches, but yeah, I paid 75 grand for that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's what led to the acquisition and, and that's not like a, maybe I would have got it without, I would have not gotten it because for one, they had the connection. I wasn't ready to sell because, you know, I thought I wanted X and thought it was worth about a third of that at the time. And I was like, I need two more years to get to where I want to be. And he said, this guy's pretty hungry for a company with the processes that you have. They're wanting to tap into this space because they're really focused more on solar and they're wanting access to our community and more acquisitions and all that. He said, just go see him. It'll be worth it. Just a learning experience. Just go see him. So I flew out there. I saw him and dude, we had a deal really like at the table. So listen to that, people. Six figures he's, uh, Hunter has spent in the last six months on coaching alone. Multiple six figures. Multiple six figures. Yeah. And they also say yeah. that if you're going to provide a service like that and not willing to go out there and actually look for it yourself, you're kind of being a hypocrite. We sold, um, just to give a little insight to, to Revolt, we sold 40 people into Revolt at $43,000 is what we charge for Revolt for a year. Um, and it's, it's value is, I, again, I could give you the 40 guys and they would all tell you it's worth way more than that. Like at least a hundred grand because of, even if they don't get 
the value that they need for their business, personally, it's, it's invaluable, man. Um, and, and they all get, obviously they all get the value on the business side too. Um, and we, we actually just changed up the structure of revolt and dropped the price in less than half because we want to be able to serve more people because really like with the high touch deliverables we had of like people flying out to our office and us helping them and, and some of those things, we could only serve about 40. We thought we were going to be able to do 60 and really it was about 40 is the cap. And uh, so we actually just changed it and dropped the price in less than half so that we could reach a hundred people now and just took out some of those higher touch deliverables. At what point in your career did you, did you, um, did you seek out coaching? Man. Um, before I left the fire department, I mean, that's part of what led me to leave the fire department is I started paying for coaches and masterminds and events. And I was like, dude, what are, like, I would see people that, this sounds horrible, but that I felt like I was better than, you know, like felt like I was sharper than, felt like I was smarter than, felt like I worked harder than them, freaking crushing it. And I'm like, what am I doing, man? Like, I got to get out of here. I got to free up more time. I got to put in more work towards this and not this. And then most importantly, and always is surrounding yourself with the right people to have the relationships and then to have that accountability. Would you even suggest that people can't afford the coaching to still find a way to get the money and do it? If it's something like if it's a high ticket offer like that? Yes, dude. Like as long as, and I'm not saying just blow your money on something that the biggest thing is like, even there's so many coaches out there that I see get hated on all the time. Some big names that I won't say because I don't have any feeling towards them, but there's plenty of big coaches in the entrepreneurial space that get hated on all the time of like, Hey, I paid 20 grand for this course and I didn't get anything. I paid five grand. I paid a hundred grand. Well, it's about taking action too. I mean, yeah, you can it's go ahead literally, and spend the money. It's literally just executing dude. Like right. if, if, if they have the crappiest course in the world, I promise you, you can make your money back on one small thing if you would just execute it. Like for real, like I took a course uh, back in like 2017, it was five grand. I was not impressed at all with the course. I was kind of pissed that I bought it, kind of pissed at the guy that sold it to me. Um, I got to the event, felt like I was much more high level than most of the people in the room. Again, I know that sounds arrogant. I'm not trying to sound like that. I'm just being realistic with you about something. I've been in plenty of rooms where I'm the smallest guy and that's where I prefer to be. Um, but this guy oversold the course. Like it was not worth what I paid. I knew everything in the course already. It was some Facebook ad stuff, but there was one little thing that he taught me about how to use ringless voicemails. I didn't know how to use ringless voicemails. I don't know if you know what that is, but there's a program called slob, slob broadcast. Dude, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars off that one thing for real. Like just the one thing, yeah. but you've got to freaking implement it. Like you've got to actually do the work. And that's what we tell people when they sit down with Cornerstone is we're going to give you all the tools to train and technology, but you got to put in the work. When people come in with roofing.com, same thing. We're going to give you the opportunity, but you got to put in the work. People come to RoofCon, like, dude, you can come to RoofCon and listen to Ed Milet, Craig Rochelle, Iron Cowboy, uh, John Maxwell, all these big names, Danny Kerr, Dell Childress, huge people in the industry for $297. And people complain about it because it's $297. People complain about it because it's in October and I got stuff going on at work. Dude, what we say every time is the reason you can't is the reason you must. If you don't have time, dude, you need to be at the conference more than anybody because we're going to show you how to create more time by building systems and processes. If you don't have the money, you need to be at the conference just as much as anybody because we're going to show you how to make more money. And dude, you know what? I usually say on podcasts like this, like if someone legitimately, like legitimately does not have the money, like you got $48 in your bank account and you're trying to eat next next week, come to the event, man. You can hit me up on Facebook, Hunter Blue. You can have a ticket. I've snuck into conferences. Like I, I've been the guy, dude. Like for real, I've snuck into conferences. When I was broken, I couldn't afford it. I've been the guy, right? And I always try to go back and give more value later by buying their course or whatever. So if that's you and you can't, literally can't afford it, you got to be real with yourself and have integrity. If you can't afford it, you hit me up and I'll give you a ticket. After you come, you see the value and you make money off of it, you can pay me back later. Uh, just for people who are who are listening, uh, in the show description, we are going to put a link uh, with a promo code. So for all yeah. our Claims Game fans and all our all our listeners, uh, what did we say? It was going to be Claims? Claims, just Claims, lowercase Claims, 10% off if, uh, if you use the promo code Claims when you go to RoofCon.com and buy your ticket. Yeah, and then I'm also going to put that in the intro when I do the intro separately so that we can get you going. And I'm definitely going to see you there. Um, 
You know, one thing that fascinates me also um, is the way you give back. You know, um, it seems like everything you're doing, it's not just, it's not at all profit motivated, which is honestly, I'm really excited that I did this with you, Hunter, because you really, you really motivated me just in this podcast. You know, I've been, I've been questioning, I mean, okay, I, I'm, I'm losing, I'm getting off topic, but I've been questioning myself about who to look for, for a coach and who, and who, where, where to get this and how much money to spend and stuff like that. Cause of everything that's sort of going on in my life now as well. Mm. And, uh, you've, you've really sold that for me. Um, but as far as I, I really like how you've focused so much on just giving back and making sure that you're just giving back to people in your community. Is that something that you've always done? Is that something that when you start to make money, you realize, okay, I have an opportunity that I can do this, uh, where did, where did that start? Yeah. Yeah. Again, tied back to freaking elementary school, man, like student council. I remember funny enough today, September 10th, uh, September 11th, I was in fifth grade. I remember I was walking back from student council meeting and I walked into the room and everybody in the room was watching, um, you know, fifth grade. yeah, I was in fifth grade, man. Are my you first old? Year, my first year of college. Jeez, you're <laughs> old, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm 30. I don't know how old you are. That's awesome, man. Uh, so yeah, fifth grade, man. And and just, uh, I, I went home that day and watched, like, dude, I remember counting. I was like 10, 11 years old, whatever. I remember counting the TV station. It was like 60 out of 65 stations were just 9-11. And I told my parents that day I, was join- I wanted to join the Marine Corps. Like, nice. that's when I decided to join the Marine Corps and, you know, ended up doing that cool enough. I ended up graduating from boot camp, got my UGA on September 11th, uh, 2009. Wow. So eight years what after a coincidence. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, uh, so then I went to, to middle school. I joined, you know, the beta club and giving back there. I was involved with like mission trips. I was the president of Amer- American Air Cross. And so like my identity became, I'm this basically poor kid that was embarrassed to get out of his car because it was so trashy. So how do I create an identity for myself? And, and, you know, honestly, maybe even subconsciously, it was an ego thing, like to, to have a title, to be the president of American Red Cross, to be the president of Beta Club, to, you know, be in student council, whatever at that time. But then as I grew, it became more about like, Hey, I really actually enjoy serving people. And, you know, I, I had a, uh, I haven't said this publicly yet. I've told a couple of my friends last, let's see, what's today? No, it was this week. It was uh, Tuesday. I was eating before our power hour at Fueled and I was having lunch. This kid walked out with his dad. They're in rough clothes and they get into this car and it's a black Bonneville. I don't know if you know what a Bonneville is. It's an older car. We had a green Bonneville growing up and <clears throat> They get in this car and the dad starts trying to turn it over and it's just not turning over, not turning over, not turning over. And dude, for the first time in years, man, I was looking at this kid. This kid wasn't looking at me. You know, his head's kind of down in the passenger seat. He's in public, all these people. And I'm looking at this kid, dude. And I swear to you, I had this just pain in my gut and I could feel this kid's pain because I remember being that kid. And it was a good reminder for me of why I have to keep pushing hard, why I cannot afford to take my foot off the pedal, because that kid needs to know what's possible. That kid needs to know that he doesn't have to stay in that circumstance. And that doesn't, I'm not saying anything bad about that parent. That parent is doing probably the best they know how to do. But that kid has an opportunity to be more, to give more, to serve more, and to change the world. But it takes guys like me and you and the people listening to this podcast to step up, share our story, and show them what's possible. You know, you brought up before the podcast, Diego's story. If you don't know Diego's story, you can go over to my profile, Hunter Ballou on Facebook, and you can look up Diego's story. I just posted about it. The guy was 310 pounds when he started working here, and he said, hey, I want to get to 250. Well, I don't play the game of like, hey, I'm going to try this out. If you're on my team, you're all in or you're all out. And so we made a commitment, and we, as we always do, we set a deadline. The deadline was RoofCon 2021, which is three weeks from now. Yesterday or two days ago, whenever it was, two days ago now, he hit it. We went on a four mile run. My man was wearing a trash bag, a hoodie, a 20 pound vest. We were like right at 251. Um, I rounded up all the troops and we had about 40 people there to celebrate as he rounded the corner. We knew he'd be under 250 and he was at 247. Nice. But as he, as he went on that journey, it, it started with like, Hey, I got to do this for my kids and my family and all the things. And I want to feel better about myself. And obviously that was a big part of it. But as he went through the journey, what he found was 
there's a ton of people that were watching him and a ton of people that were inspired by him to do inspired. I mean, you inspire, you could, you could, you could inspire yourself. And while you're doing that, you inspire others. You can accomplish big things in your life. And it's not just about you. You have no idea sometimes what you're doing for others who are watching, who are just looking at you. Holy crap. Look what this person just did. Absolutely. And if he doesn't share his story publicly throughout the journey, nobody would ever know. So don't be ashamed of your story, man. Share your story. People need to know there's hope. You know, one of the things we talk about all the time is, is miscarriages. Like, do you know, like 50% of Americans end up having a miscarriage, but everybody feels like they're alone. They don't know it's that common. And so being willing to share the story and put it out there so that when your friend has the miscarriage, they can reach out to you and you can help them through it. Like literally turn all your devastating moments and all your pain into victories and opportunities to help and lead other people. And we, and we have the opportunity to do it now through social media. Absolutely. Um, so what's on the horizon for, uh, not just for Hunter, even though I know you want to get into politics, but we don't have to get into that. No, I'm not. <laughs> did you get that. a bunch of yeses or hell no? No, I, I did. Uh, I got, I don't know, probably like 70 or 80 yeses and then like 20 no's. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, a bunch of the no's were like. Don't do it, man. It'll screw it up. It'll screw you yeah. up. You got it. You got yeah. it right now. You're in a sweet spot right like, now. Don't some of do my it. best friends, they're like, my best friends are like, bro, don't freaking do it. You can't change anything. They're all a bunch of I idiots. Mean, like, well, the pro- yeah, because you get into that whole money thing and it just, it's yeah. going to get complicated. It's going to, it's going to just dilute I've always, everything. I always jokingly said I would, I would run and, uh, we had the, the Lieutenant governor, which is, you know, like the vice president, vice governor come to our fueled event Tuesday and we started talking it up about it. And, uh, I don't know, man, we'll see what happens, but I I'm not doing it anytime soon. It would be down the road. I kind of want to, I've, I've said, I want to hit a billion by 40 and then run for president. If I could hit a billion by 40, I'd really consider it, but I'm a long way from that. So we'll see what happens. All right. So here it is. You're hearing it now. Hunter Ballou for president, uh, 2032 <laughs> president of, uh, the rotary club. What's next uh, for RoofCon? What do you got? What, what's, what's the vision there? Yeah, man. So freaking stoked for it, man. Well, I, I mean, I we've, got RoofCon, we've got RoofCon this year, but I want to know what's your, what's your long-term vision for it? Yeah. Yeah. To continue growing, obviously uh, this year, two to 3000 is where we're aiming for. Um, and then I'd like to see like 5,000 next year. We'll, we'll see what happens, but I'd like to see like 5,000 people come next year. Um, it's, it's difficult, man, because you only have so many hours while you're at that conference. And there's so many great speakers that we want to introduce to people. Like there's plenty of people that like seriously, 90% or 95% of people don't know who Craig or show is, and he's going to change their life. And they're all going to be listening to his podcast. A lot of people don't know who Ed Milet is or John Maxwell is, or Iron Cowboy is. A lot of people don't know who Iron Cowboy is. I and so, Amy, are we, are we going to run a, uh, a triathlon with him or what? I had, I had a little call with him yesterday. Yeah. We no. might do something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so for happens. those of you that don't know, Iron Cowboy ran 365 straight triathlons yeah, in one he's year. He's crazy, man. He's crazy, dude. That's fucking so, crazy. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I love it. Those, those, those guys like inspire the crap out of me. Like David Goggins and all those guys. It's like every morning I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to do it. And then you get up and you yeah. just get after it. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, Hunter, honestly, I mean, I... We wrapped up, we put so much information into that hour. I mean, that was, I usually go an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, but frankly, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to convolute the show at all. I want to make sure that it just stays, you know, with the value that we're trying to provide. Um, honestly, nothing but the best of luck to you, Hunter. You will see me at RoofCon. I promise you that I'm going to be there, uh, without a doubt. And I can't wait to see all this. I'm looking at the website now and I see just a bunch of guys that I know. Um, Yeah. yeah, I just had a podcast with Sam just the other day. So, nice. and I've been trying to get with, um, uh, our door to door hustler. Uh, he's, he lives in my area in Tampa. I, I just wanted nice. to come over. He's up one. here in Greenville right now, actually. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. He's yeah. a great guy too. So, uh, you will definitely see me there without a doubt. And, um, dude, good luck with everything, even though it ain't much about luck as much as it is about effort and getting after yeah. it. But seriously, just to, from the bottom of my heart, good luck. And I really want to thank you for coming on. You've inspired me. 
just in this hour that we've talked, and that's uh, that's pretty incredible that you're able to do that, uh, especially when I'm the host and you're the guest. Uh, but you've just been an, an inspiration just in this in this hour. You've been an inspiration, honestly, in just the uh, probably like six or seven months that I've honestly been following you uh, with just with your hustle, with your hustle, with your attitude, with your willing to give back. I mean, it's a phenomenal story that you've got, and I could see just some amazing, amazing things ahead in your life. And honestly, I wish you nothing but the best. Appreciate you, brother. I look forward to seeing you down in Orlando. No, I'll September be there. 30th. I'll be there for sure. sure. All right, Hunter. I appreciate it again. Thank you so much. And uh, this will probably go live in uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it on though before Roofcon. That's for sure. Sweet. So what we'll do is we'll do it like on the week of Roofcon or something. We'll get it up. Sweet man. All right, we could just uh, we'll stop it there. Thank you everybody for listening, and on to the next show. And then we'll stop. Well, I'll, I'm gonna keep recording because I, I put like outtakes and stuff like that. But dude, that's awesome, cool. man. You're a bad motherfucker. I appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it, man. Well, you already knew that. Had fun. Had fun on the podcast, dude. Appreciate you having me on. I look forward to uh, actually meeting you down there. No, I can't wait. I can't wait. Anything you need from me, honestly, I'll do whatever I can. I'm going to promote the shit out of this. I've got my event uh, next week. Uh, it's just nice. my normal meetup. I'm hoping to turn it into something like that, but I want to make sure that I'm providing value, too. I just don't want to throw a conference just to throw nice. a fucking conference. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, What's it called? It's just a meetup. We call it a meetup. Honestly, it started okay. off with the social media thing started really going. And I just nice. said, hey, I'm going to Miami. If anybody wants to meet me at this bar, you know, let's meet up. And I had like 25 nice. people show up. And now That's we're awesome. averaging between 100 and 150 people. Hell yeah. But dude. it's a free is that event. A, is it mostly uh, roofers or it's claims six, guys? It's 60% public adjusters. Okay. And then about 30% roofers. Damn, there's that many public adjusters? Bro, you, I, I, I think you were a little, you know, that's who mainly you were talking to is public adjusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't. Want, I was thinking about that during the show, and I didn't want to say it, but yeah. There's a weird thing. The dynamic between the roofers and the public adjusters is just a weird thing because, like, roofers don't want to lose the ten or twenty percent if they bring on a public adjuster. But what they, I think, have to realize also is that. Honestly, I think it's slowing them down on actually getting paid on some of those claims because they could be going out there getting after it and growing their business. But instead, they're maybe hiring. Maybe they have a team of people who, who work all that stuff, uh, but they're not licensed public adjusters unless they have, some, unless they have something like that. What's your, uh, what's your company called, PA firm called? My PA firm is Elite Resolutions. And then uh, Elite Resolutions is the PA firm. Yeah, go ahead. I know you got a two o'clock. Uh, Elite Resolutions is the PA firm. And then the Commercial Claims Advocate is sort of what I'm trying to do with like your Fueled and Revolt and Masterminds and stuff like that. Nice. That's awesome, That's dude. shit I'm trying to figure out too, man. I mean, I've been like, but you know what I haven't done? 37 years old. I've never really hired a coach. So that's what I'm trying to get into now. Um, you no, know, honestly, dude, it's been less about, uh, like for me, um, I'm in a weird spot where... <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to say I don't get a ton of value, but I don't get a ton of value out of joining masterminds anymore. Um, I'm looking for more of like one-on-one -on -one interaction and I really don't even want coaching. I just want access. Right. So like once a month when I have the big ass question of like, Hey, can you help me figure this out? They're there. And you'll like, pay really you'll pay a hundred thousand dollars for even asking that one question because that could yeah. give you a million dollars worth of advice. Uh, Russell Brunson in his book, uh, I was I was listening to his book uh, for like a second time, and he talked about uh, I think he spent seventy five thousand dollars to ask to basically sit for one hour Zoom call. It was recorded um, to ask a question, and he ended up saying it was a financial advisor, and he said he said. If you sit with me for an hour, I guarantee that you'll be able to make your money back by the end of the hour. By the end of the hour, I think he, just with doing two or three trades, he made $45,000. By the end of yeah. the week, he was already at six figures based on that $75,000 one-hour call. That's what yeah. you're trying to do. Yeah. Dude, it's, you know Tony Robbins charges a million bucks a year to have his phone number? And he said he has a seven-year seven waiting list. What? A of people willing to pay it. And I guess he just only allows like 10 or 20 people, but he said people that pay more expect less. And that's true, man. I mean, one of my buddies, uh, Robert Posey sells courses and he said, dude, the higher the course, the less the refund rate because they expect less. Like I don't, I paid 75 grand, but dude, I can go to one event and get my value back. Cause I just need that one little thing to right. actually implement to my business. And so, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's cool just, to see. I just started looking into this. Like I, I was blown off my seat, you know, Myron Golden, yeah. He's fucking phenomenal. 
Uh, yeah. uh, I, I talked to his brother and he was like, oh, $55,000. But now that I'm looking, the $55,000 is really not that bad when you have access to somebody like that, you know? So yeah. I'm looking into all these What's your main problem that you're trying to solve? Figuring it all out, putting it all together. Just yeah. putting it all together. Like I've got the, I've got the, the, my, you know, you, you brought up a good point with that one source of income. That's very important. That's the PA firm that does really well. And now I'm trying to get and move to the consulting thing. Uh, I've got a zoom course that I do that I charge 700 bucks for. I want to turn it into something like what Dan Henry does, which is just have one high ticket offer, have like three, uh, recorded courses just there that people could access uh, group consulting once a month, maybe a one-on-one -on -one, like once or twice a year. And, uh, and I realized too, like, uh, cause I've got some consultees now charging 200 bucks a month, by the way, for one hour with me each week, uh, each, each month. And, um, the connections that I've made through the social media, like people text me every day. Hey, I need a roofer out here. Hey, I need an engineer here. Hey, do you know a PA in New York? Hey, do you know a PA in Louisiana? And I've got people all over the place from the social media. So I'm realizing this, the connections that people will get if they have access to me will be tremendous too. But yeah, just putting it all together. That's my problem. You should uh you should fly out one day, man, and we could jam on it, whiteboard it, and see what we could put together. I've been a part of a lot of masterminds. I've run a handful myself, been pretty successful with it. And uh I, I love that game, man. I felt Robert Posey put together a lot of offers because that's what he does, is sells sells those offers. Um but yeah, and you could even come to one of our retreats that we run for free and see how we structure it. And just rip the format, and bro, it freaking works. Like um, it, it works. I, I hit it off with you too, uh, but I had I had the podcast also with Sam, and I met Sam personally at one of the conferences. I might I might give Sam a shot too. Uh, yeah. Just Sam Taggart, um, strategic coach is something that I've uh, that people have told me really well about. Just really just making sure that your whole system just sort of runs the way it's supposed to run, and then I'm which, gonna do the Dan Henry. Sam, are you talking about Sam Taggart? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, but I'd love to do that too. I mean, send me some information. I'm gonna start just hitting up all these things. It's time for me to just really get this get this train moving because um, yeah, no, it's just time, and I've got I've got some influence. You know, I mean, it's worked a lot better than I thought. I thought I was just doing it just to establish myself as an expert and then get a ton of claims. Now I've yeah. established myself as an expert. I'm getting a ton of claims, and people are looking to me to try to get yeah. as much advice as possible. Yeah. No, I don't want to sell you anything. I'm just saying, if you want to whiteboard it, I'll help you. And if you want to come see the retreat, you can just literally copy our retreat and do it yourself for adjusters. You let me know when, and I'll make my time to go there. All right, brother. I got a baby coming too, by the way, so it gets a little complicated. When is it? I got a baby coming too. When is it coming? Oh, March 3rd is the dude. Oh, you got plenty of time, bro. The the coming up and whiteboarding it, you can literally come anytime. Just let me know what days work, and I'll see if I'm in town. And then the... Uh, the retreat is in probably like November. I don't know if we have dates locked down yet. Okay. What's your number, Hunter? I'll hit you up on I'll hit you up on uh, on Facebook. No big deal. Facebook's better. I never use text. Yeah. All right. I'll hit you up on Facebook. I'll let you know if I can go up there. All right, brother. See you. Hunter, thanks, man. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. Right, appreciate it. See you.